All right, folks, so in today's video, we're gonna show how I set up a Raspberry Pi to communicate with my Zygu or Shagu G90 for digital modes, specifically FT8. Now we're gonna use an image on a Raspberry Pi called HamPi by W3DJS, and I'll include a link below on how to prepare your Raspberry Pi to use that particular image. But it has all the software installed to make this task pretty easy, so that's why I went with it. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to use FT8 or any of the other digital modes. It's going to be a tutorial on how to configure your environment or your radio system. And then that way you'll be able to play along and then you'll be able to try it out. And then you'll learn how to use these applications in the event that you don't already know how to do that. So if that sounds like something you want to watch, why don't you do yourself a favor? Go grab yourself a nice cold one. Come on back and we'll get start. Oh, dang. Before we get started, there is something that I wanted to say. There's a bunch of buttons below. There's a like button, a comment button, a subscribe button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. Now go on and get that cold one. All right, so hopefully everybody made it back. For this particular video, we are using a Raspberry Pi 4, and it has the 8 gigabytes of RAM. I have it mounted in a case with a fan to help protect from overheating. Now, one of the things I want to show is, is that I use this Wi-Fi adapter from Panda Wireless. I just find that I get a better signal from it. I don't use it out in the field, but when I'm in the house, I use it. I also use a USB extender because things get a little bit crowded. These USB ports are uh, close together and can cause a little bit of problems. For an audio interface, we use the Sabrent USB adapter. You can pick this up off of Amazon for about five or six bucks. It's pretty cheap and it works well. Well, let's see if I can get it plugged in here. I always do that where I try to plug things in upside down. And that's exactly why I use that extender. I use this XGG comms interface. On the left, you can see the PC or Raspberry Pi connections, and you can see the connections for the radio, the Zygu G90. And I'm just going to be honest, I'm not entirely thrilled with this. I actually have two of these, and I have problems on the cat control being reliable for both. This cable interface is about 65 or 70 bucks, and that makes it uh, all of a more bitter pill to swallow. So anyhow, here is the USB interface for the cat control. And then I have two 3.5 millimeter jacks and I just plug them into my Sabrin audio interface. There are multiple ways to solve this problem. And the problem being getting audio in and out of your Raspberry Pi and then using cat control for PTT or push to talk. Some people like to use Vox, but I don't, I can't stand that. So I do want to use cat control. Now you can see if I remove my wireless adapter, I get a more compact, more efficient setup. And that's what I would use out in the field. The Raspberry Pi runs off of USB-C and you need about two and a half amps. So make sure that you have an appropriate charger or battery if you're using this thing remotely. So here's the G90. If you take a look at the side of the radio, you see two ports, one for headphone and then one for cat control on the display portion of the radio. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug our cat control 3.5 millimeter jack into there and we should be good to go. Now we're going to spin this baby around and take a look at the back of the radio. So here you can see some ports. We're concerning ourselves with the accessory port, which is a DIN connector. So I just go ahead and I plug that cable in, and that's how we're going to pass audio in and out of the radio into the Raspberry Pi. Now we want to make some changes to the G90. We're going to use the CMP button to make sure that speech compression is off. Here I'm turning it on. And I'm showing you the icon with this pen. You get that little microphone up there. We don't want the compression to mess with our signal. So we're going to turn it off. The next thing we want to do is set off our AGC. Now you can see the AGC icon at the top of the screen. And I can cycle through two dashes, an A or an F. I want to make sure that it's set for two dashes. And I do this by using the AGC button. There's two buttons on the top to cycle through your modes. You want to set it to USB. And here you can see USB is highlighted on the screen. The next thing we want to do is we want to set our aux in to line. And we do this by pressing the function button and then POW. So let me go ahead and do that. I can use the PO button to toggle between input and gain. 
So I want to make sure that my input is set to line and I set my gain to 10. The gain goes from 0 to 20. Now what we want to do is we want to set our aux in volume. I press and hold the function button and then I get a menu. I'm going to use the VM button at the bottom of the radio to cycle through the various settings until I get to option number five. Once I get to option number five, I use the tuning knob to adjust my volume. And I can go from zero to 15 and I'm just gonna leave this on eight. Now messing with your in and out volume will impact the way that your radio performs in terms of ALC, which should be between 95 and 100. So I'm going to do the same thing for my aux out, except for I go to option number six. And here I have it set to 10. You're going to have to play around with this setting and find out which one works best for you. And that's going to wrap it up for the settings that we need to do on the radio. Again, you may need to fine tune these in for your particular setup. I've run the HamPi image by W3DJS on my Raspberry Pi because it's easy. I'll include a link to a video I did below showing you how to set up HamPi on your Raspberry Pi. The reason I use this software is because it has most of the packages that I need already installed and I just need to configure them. Here you can see the FL Suite or the FL Rig Suite. Here's FL Digi and I can right click on any of these things and it will add an icon right to my desktop for the items that I use frequently. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open up FL Rig and we're going to use FL Rig for our rig control. Now as I'm opening this up it initializes and attempts to make a connection to my radio. And here you can see that it did connect. Now I want to go into the configuration settings and show you how I have this configured. So if you take a look, I'm using the rig as IC7100 or the ICOM7100. There's a lot of debate as to which rig you should use, but I find that the 7100 works best. I also set my, my connection port, and here I'm using USB 0. That might be different on your configuration and setup, so you might have to play around with that a little bit. Here you can see different options in the drop-down list. But again, USB 0 seems to work fine for me. And then you want to set your baud rate, which should be 19200. I'm going to make sure that the button is checked for PTT via CAT and I have a green light connected. I can also hit the initialization button which will initialize my configuration. You want to do this anytime you make any configuration changes. That way FL Rig can communicate correctly with your Zygu G90. Now with some fancy pitcher and pitcher action, I'm going to demonstrate how the rig control works on the Zygu G90, or Shegu, as some people say. Here I'm going to adjust the frequency. Now this isn't something that we're going to do because we're going to use WSJTX to control all this. But as you can see, as I make adjustments here, they take place on the interface on the G90, or screen as some people call it. Now not everything's going to work here because this is for a 7100 and not a G90. The volume control does work. And then I can also turn on and adjust my squelch. It's not as granular or fine as it is when you adjust it from the radio. Down here, I can uh, adjust my uh, preamps and my attenuators by clicking these buttons. And you can see the interface changing on the G90 as I do this. I can also turn on and off my noise blanker. So this is pretty handy. And then the other thing I can do, this, this AN button doesn't work and the tune doesn't work, but the other thing that I can do is I can turn the push to talk on or transmit if I wanted. But again, we're going to use rig control via WSJTX for all of this. So you really don't need to use this interface for anything other than testing, like I just showed here. From the menu, I want to pick settings, and then I want to click on the radio tab. And then here we're going to set our rig, and we're going to set it using FL Rig FL Rig. If I hit this drop down box, you can see many different radios that are supported by WSJTX. But as mentioned earlier, we're going to use FL Rig for our control. We want to make sure our PTT method is set to CAT. 
And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to test the PTT to make sure that it works. When I go ahead and I click on the test PTT button, my Zygu G90 should show that it is in transmission or TX mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Here you can see the green light on the left hand side turns to red. I click it again to turn it off and everything seems to be working just fine. Here from the main window in WSJTX, we are going to change the frequencies from 20 to 40 meters. And you can see this change takes place via CAT control on the G90. Now we need to adjust the audio tab underneath of settings. We want to adjust our sound card input and output. And I just picked my ALSA input for the input and I have it set to mono. Now for the output, I picked the ALSA output and both of these are for my specific Sabrent USB card. And this one is set to stereo. But then in the right hand side, there are two buttons. I picked mono for both of those. You can see you have audio interfaces on your Raspberry Pi for many different things. You might have to play around with this. And again, your settings are gonna be specific to your hardware configuration. When shutting down, you wanna exit out of WSJTX first, and then you wanna close down your FL rig console. When you do this, it's going to go through a process where it disconnects from your Zygu or Shegu G90. Once this is done, you want to unplug your CAT cable from your radio. The reason I do this is that if you leave your radio uh, CAT cable plugged in and then your radio is off and you turn it on, the radio goes into programming mode. And sometimes this requires you to reflash the firmware to the display unit to get it working again. You may be able just to disconnect the CAT cable, disconnect the power, wait about a minute, plug everything back in and power it up but I've seen that not work every single time. And I've also gotten reports from other people that the same thing has happened to them. Anyhow, hopefully you learned something. This should get you off to the races. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below. I'd like to thank everybody for watching the video. I really appreciate it.